have a, a program for the uh, a new applied sciences school that's going to be We uh, are. Launched. One of the things to diversify the economy mm -hmm. is to see if we can get more universities here. We have great universities. There's Fordham and NYU Poly and Columbia. And yeah, there's a, somebody said to me, oh, you know, you won't, you'll never get as many schools as Boston has. Uh, there are more graduate students and undergraduate students in New York than there are people in Boston. Yeah. So that's just not quite true. You just don't recognize yeah. it. Uh, but you can never have enough. And so I want to make sure we support the great universities mm -hmm. we have here. Um, and there are lots of small ones, too. I mean, you know, Cooper Union and you know, the, the, some mm -hmm. really specialty schools that really are top draw. But you would like to have more. So we put out a proposal uh, asking for responses of anybody who would like to move a university here or build a, another campus here of their university. We've got lots of responses. We whittled it down. We've combined we're now down to a half a dozen, and uh, we've said we'll put uh, land and $100 million in infrastructure in. They'd have to raise their own money, uh, but they'd have a chance to have a campus in the most exciting city in the world. Well, some people said, oh, nobody's going to respond to that. Overwhelmingly res overwhelming response. And those who have stuck it out and are in the finals, you know, the president of these universities are here every two weeks, and they lobby, and their alumni call, and all you know, they, they really think that it's a great thing for them. And I think it is because they can not only have their campus elsewhere, but the campus here, and both can feed off each other. Faculty and students even can go back and forth. Uh, one of them, uh, California University, uh, surveyed their engineering faculty and uh, said, would anybody like to move to New York? And the, half the people said instantly, you know, <laughs> just because it's become exciting and it's yeah. become safe. And mm -hmm. uh, it's the it city at the moment. Um, somewhere there's the next Mark Zuckerberg sitting in a dorm room, sure. and people in California, there's a, some people will say New York's too expensive, it's too many distractions, uh, you, well, should, you should come it's out. it's not the low price place, and I always get vilified for saying it, but it's true. If, you, if, if rent, low rent, and low taxes is the difference between you being successful or not successful, you don't have a business. Yeah. If the having access to the best and the brightest is the difference, this is the place to be. Mm -hmm. So it's also true. New York is not just Park Avenue. If you want offices, the hot places are in Brooklyn and Queens, on Staten Island, and up in the Bronx or Upper Manhattan, parts of Manhattan. The, the rents in Brooklyn are actually lower than in Mountain View and companies I'm an investor in. My, yeah, but my uh, uh, Spanish instructor, I take a lesson every day, it's a hobby, and he moved from uh, Astoria in Queens into Manhattan because Astoria became too expensive. <laughs> so you never know. Yeah. But yeah, Brooklyn is the hot place at the moment. Mm -hmm. There was 17 new hotels in one little part of Queens opened in the last two years. It, the city is much bigger and there's off, lots of alternatives. And it's like when I came to New York, you, you share an apartment. It's, you know, your parents would say, oh, that's terrible. No, it's fun. It's what young people do. Yeah. It's, you know, and they want to be with other young people. And I've always said that New York is the most wonderful city in the world for people that don't uh, start out with nothing and come here and they want to work. Or whether you're getting off a boat, going off by the Statue of Liberty and coming into the city from... Uh, elsewhere is and not speaking a word of English and not having any friends and starting your ways up the economic ladder, which is the, 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 the American story, if you will. Or you're a young kid, you get out of high school, you want to come to school here. There's so many things to do. There's so many things that are free. There's so many things that are low price. Yeah, you don't go to the most fancy restaurants, but we have 25,000 restaurants in New York City. I'd yeah. suggest you could find one at your price point, no yeah. matter what it is. Yeah. When I moved here, I slept in a hallway. And I said, my park, my backyard is the park, and my kitchen is, and is it a was restaurant. Fun. And I, mean, I loved I, it. Yeah. I came. I lived for ten years in a one-room apartment. I looked out on a brick wall, but if I went to the picture window and looked up, I could see the sky. So I knew whether to take a rain. <laughs> we had a brick or not. wall, and we put a, we put a poster of a beach or something. <laughs> fine. I mean, yeah. That's that's what growing up is all about. Just like the people who've come from around the world to New York, and you know they start out and they take two jobs and they don't use all the skills they had because they can't qualify, whatever. And maybe they know in the end they're not going to wind up being terribly successful, but their dream is that their children will. Mm -hmm. That's the, why this country has to open its doors again and let immigrants in. This country, as I've said, committing national suicide. We want people to come here who have exactly that dream. 
we, we have issues. I just had to write a, a, a letter for a founder of a company who's, who's backed by top tier VCs to get him to stay in the United States. I mean, it's just, I, I find it crazy. It is, he's hired I'm, 30 people. I'm down in Washington all the time giving the same speech, You're preaching to the choir yeah. here. Um, anything else you'd like to say about the New York? Well, you know, know it, it's, uh, my kids have grown up on the streets of New York. Um, it is very safe today. A woman could walk in any neighborhood in the city and be safe during the day in most neighborhoods at night. And you can't say that about anybody else. I lived else. there 20 years. I never had anyone look at me. Right. I, I mean, it's like... <laughs> it's fascinating. The neighborhoods where the young college kids want to go live now are neighborhoods where in a, a million years you'd say, oh, they'd never go there. But New York, think about New York in terms of one thing that really tells you why it's different. We are a very diverse city. People come from virtually every country around the world. They speak, I don't know, we, we answer the phone in 180 languages for our 311 call the government service. Um, there's no religion that's not practiced here. There's no food that's not available. There's, you can, freedom of speech, it's the ultimate place. You don't have the right to set up tents and, uh, and, and sleeping bags, but you have the right to speak and we protect it. And we're very proud of what we do. But what's really different is not the extent of the diversity, it's the way we live. We live as a mixture rather than a mosaic. So in another city, you'll find a neighborhood where all of the Ethiopians live. In New York, this spread throughout the city. You'll find one neighborhood where all the people of one economic level live. That's not true. Today in one block, you can have retail and residential and industrial and commercial. You can have subsidized public housing and market rate luxury housing all in the same block. You can, if you go to Queens and you walk down the street, you know, this store sign in Urdu, another one in Russian, another one in Korean, another one in Spanish, or even one in English. And there's no other place that does that. And so what happens is you and I walk down the same steps to the subway next to each other. Now you may look different, dress different, sound different, act differently. But, you know, I go down the steps with you every day. And, you know, I stop thinking about you as a threat or somebody different. You're just another person who's got to take the subway to get to work because it's the only ways to get around. I take it every day. It's, I don't, somebody said, do you like it? I said, if you like it, you need to shrink. Mm -hmm. But it's quick and it works. It's very dependable and affordable. And it's in New York, the same thing is true with the street corner on the sidewalk. And so the diversity of the city you don't notice it, but you start developing friendships or talking at a bar or sitting in a classroom or working in a company or uh, playing on a public golf course. We have 13 public golf courses in New York City, so if you don't think we have green, we have plenty of it. We have more parks than almost every, any place else. Um, we start sharing things, and we, our cultures start combining, our cuisines start combining, our religions start combining, our language starts evolving together. Uh, and that's very different than any place else. And I would argue it's the reason that New York is so diverse economically and why our unemployment rate is still too high, but it's low compared to other cities. And if you think about it, this is the entry place for an awful lot of people who's starting out the lattice, so you'd always have a slightly higher tendency towards mm -hmm. higher unemployment. But it, it's also the place where um, you're valued, it's a meritocracy. Nobody asks where you came from, how much money you have, uh, who your parents were. It's just not an issue. Um, if you go and you look at people who are uh, uh, working on charities, the, the, the New York City's uh, hierarchy is to a great extent built around charities because people work, they donate their time, they donate their money, they're on the boards, of, they, they, they volunteer all the time. We have an enormous number of volunteers in the city, and it's how you make friends. And those friends will come from a much more diverse group than what you'd see anyplace else. Do you think there's a, there's a characteristic uh, uh, type of startup, a tech startup here versus California? No. Like we I, don't see semiconductor companies here, for example. Well, you know, some companies uh, uh, require big space. Semiconductors yeah. are... Big well, years. they have fabulous ones now. Yeah, and, yeah know, the, I think that's true. I mean, you know, big, big pharma, all the pharmaceutical companies are yeah. in New Jersey. That's true. The hospitals are here. What we so. want to make sure is that that middle step, those small companies that build uh, M-clones and that sort of thing, yeah. they really develop. Once you start making a, a billion bottles of aspirin yeah, a yeah. day, you need big space, which you're really not going to get in New York. Uh, but I don't know that there's a difference. But I, what I do know is 
when this last recession took place, and you talked before about the end of the internet yeah. bubble, it came back. The last recession, the United States of America lost 6% of all private sector jobs, mm. and they only got back about a quarter of them. New York City only lost 0.3% of private sector jobs, and we've got virtually all of them back. Mm -hmm. So it's because of the diversity, it's because of the, uh, this is, if you wanna go out to parks, um, every kind of park you'd ever want, if you wanna go to cultural institutions, every kind, performing, visual arts, whatever, mm -hmm. sports, if you're, uh, you know, yeah, every sport played here, you, if you fly over, uh, the city in the summer, the number of cricket pitches is quite <laughs> unbelievable. Is that right? <laughs> sure, because you have an enormous a number of people from the Caribbean and from Southeast yeah. Asia. Yeah. And that's a, I, cricket's the biggest or second biggest sport in the world yeah. in terms of participation. Um, but, you know, whether it's uh, soccer or baseball, whether it's uh, at a professional level or the pickup games, it just this is where those kinds of things happen. And I think people that don't live in New York, just they, their vision is of Park Avenue or Fifth Avenue, all concrete yeah. and all wealthy. And that's just not true. Uh, the, uh, the biggest part of New York is single family houses. Uh, there's a park, our objective is to have a park within 10 minute walk of every single person. Uh, we have people think of Central Park, but there's Prospect Park and Van Cortlandt Park. and you know, parks of Staten Island is one quarter park. Hmm. Think about the one borough, it's one quarter park. Uh, we have brand new parks, uh, uh, Hudson River Park, and then right next to it, the High Line, and you go mm -hmm. to the east side, we're building a, a park, you go over to Governor's Island, uh, there's all this enormous parkland, this wonderful old island, it used to be a big Coast Guard base. Uh, so there's a lot of things to do. Bicycling, we're starting to put in a lot of bicycle lanes, and people do a lot of that, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, but it's, it, it, I don't think you can find very many things that you can't do here that you can do can do elsewhere. The difference is you can do all of them. Yeah. And so it's the number of alternatives you have.